respected seniors and dear friends today we are going to talk about eras protocol for the nsatis and role of nsatis in eras protocol eras is basically enhanced recovery after surgery in the end of the 20th century cost of surgery was going higher and higher in western world so to reduce the cost of surgery and for earlier discharge and earlier recovery of the patient they started developing this guideline and um, these guidelines have helped them to reduce the uh, in us they, it helped them to reduce the surgical cost from 3 to 6000 dollar per patient uh, especially in the colorectal surgery so th that is a huge difference so it, it was initiated by henrik kellet in 1993 um, then in 1997, um, initially it was fast track. Then ERA's name was given in the 1997. Then started they started uh, coming with their guideline uh, in 2001, and they are releasing regular uh, guidelines at the regular interval. And uh, recent most guideline was f in 2019. They have guidelines for colorectal surgery, they have guidelines for bariatric surgery, orthopedic surgery, obstetric surgery, and most of the for most of the type of surgery. In India, uh, it was not very popular because our healthcare scenario was different. Uh, 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 it is combination of uh, private practice corporate practice and government practice so private practitioner and corporate practitioner were not much worried about the cost reducing the cost so it was not very much relevant in india but nowadays government is coming with uh, various spec uh, schemes like uh, uh, Ayushman Bharat and uh, Mukhyamantri Amrutam Yojana in Gujarat and because of this type of themes, uh, schemes there are fixed packages and that's, that is why we will definitely need this in near future to reduce the cost of the surgery so that uh, hospital uh, healthcare professional can survive in this competitive scenario. So why ERAS? It is attempt to modify the physiological and psychological response to the major surgery. Any major surgery comes with the physiological and psychological response and we try to modify that to for earlier recovery and earlier discharge so it it is to redu reduce the complication in and hospital stay it improves uh, it, it it leads to improvement in cardiopulmonary function earlier return of bowel function so that patient can start orally faster and can discharge earlier early in the resumption of the normal activities so as soon as patient uh, uh, resume the normal activities uh, they are ready for the discharge so why it is important for us we anesthetists um, um, are uh, intraoperative physician till the date but our wish is to become a perioperative physician if we want to become perioperative physician this eras will going to help us a lot because era start from the pre-admission assessment to pre-op assessment to perioperative intraoperative um, role of anesthetist to the post-operative role of the anesthetist so this will going to help us to become a perioperative physician being an anesthetist we are not getting the credit what we deserve but if we become perioperative physician we get recognition uh, we will uh, get rewarded for that also so this is important to become a perioperative physician and eras will help for us eras is mainly three component uh, or i will say four component pre-admission counseling pre-operative assessment intraoperative management and post-operative management so if you look at the uh, some of the uh, ERAS protocol pre-admission we need to look for nutritional support if patient is nutritionally poor uh, then there are all chances of uh, intraoperative and postoperative complication cessation of smoking control of alcohol medical optimization same way pre-operative we need to uh, assess the medical condition optimize it uh, we are involved in the pre-operative carbohydratic drink UNV prophylaxis, intraoperative, we are involved in the temperature control, balanced fluid therapy, opioid sparing anesthesia, 
uh, shorter acting anesthetic drug uh, and in post operative uh, management we are involved in the um, um, uh, opioid sparing uh, multimodal pain uh, control PONV prophylaxis and earlier oral intake and earlier mobilization so we anesthetists are involved in the various things like, like pre admission counseling fluid management uh, pre medications uh, shorter acting anesthetic drug um, fluid intraoperative fluid management mid thoracic epidural and other techniques prevention of nausea vomiting opioid sparing anesthesia and many other component of the iras so if we compare the um, iras with conventional technique initially when we were doing conventional surgery there was no carbohydrate ring wherein iras you will give uh, preoperatively carbohydrate ring before two hours we were advised to for overnight starvation here you give uh, carbohydrate drink before two hours of the surgery routine mechanical bowel preparation is not uh, advised in the iras while parenteral hydration was uh, conventionally done but here they promote the uh, oral intake the iras encourage exercise decrease smoking decrease alcohol con consumption uh, it is about obtaining informed consent provide information about the iras identify comorbidity and antibiotic uh, administration also in intraoperative period initially it was uh, conventionally it was spinal or general anesthesia but here we combined general anesthesia along with the neuroxial anesthesia or with the blocks to reduce the requirement of general anesthesia and reduce the requirement of the opioids uh, routine utilization of nasogastric tube abdominal drains and urinary catheter were, uh, was uh, conventional but here it is when necessary uh, previously it was empirical and liberal hydration here it is optimal fluid therapy optimal oxygen maintenance minimum tissue handling like laparoscopic surgery central and arterial line should be avoided whenever necessary uh, possible and uh, we should control temperature also post operatively in uh, conventionally it was uh, removal of tube congenital to the bowel motility no and force patient mobilization and no po post operative nausea vomiting um, management but here it is everything so uh, iras is about complete um, management of the patient like here it uh, they can take care of the patient even after 30 days of the procedures so iras is complete management from pre admission to the post operative 30 days and each and every aspect we are involved so we'll look after one by uh, it one by one as i said in pre admission optimization counseling of the family and the patient is very important nutritional support cessation of smoking cessation of alcohol pre operative exercise and medical optimization we will look at it one by one counseling this is very important to prepare the patient for the surgery patients have as many fears in the mind they are feared of the needle they are feared of the iv fluid they are feared of the anesthesia they are feared of the post operative pain they are feared of the nausea and vomiting and some unknown fear so if we explain the things to the patient it will be a, it will reduce emotional and psychological stress of the patient we have to set a um, realistic goal don't give too much of hopes like there will if you tell the patient there won't be any pain and if some pain will occur then they will complain of it and they will get more stressed so give them realistic uh, goals like uh, there will be some pain only uh, or there will be some time nausea and vomiting so give the realistic uh, goals to the patient stress is more in female patients so we need uh, more counseling of such patients pre operative nutrition this is very important uh, weight loss more than 10 to 5% in the last 6 month bmi less than 18.5 or serum albumin less than 30 g per liter these are the things which are associated with uh, post operative uh, and intraoperative problem so correction of this nutritional deficiency will help to, uh, the patient uh, in the uh, intraoperative period also smoking cessation this is very important if you uh, if patient if you can convince the patient for uh, cessation of smoking for 6 to 8 week it reduce post operative morbidity by 50% this is a huge number 
so uh, this is very important to convince the patient to stop smoking before the surgery especially uh, uh, plan surgery smoker have increased pulmonary and cardiovascular complication they have increased risk of delayed healing of the wound as well as of the bone so if you explain the patient properly they will definitely cooperate alcohol suggestion this is again very important if patient is alco chronic alcoholic they have 73 percent increased chance of post-operative infection 80 percent increased chance of difficulty in breathing after extubation and 29 percent increased chances of icu admission if you can convince the patient to leave alcohol at least for six to eight weeks it will reduce the complication rate drastically low but be careful if you uh, if um, alcohol cessation is acute then there are chances of alcohol withdrawal also so again it will create more problem so in plant surgery at least ask the patient to um, stop alcohol before six to eight week of the surgery pre-operative exercise this is very important it reduces the pulmonary complication PO to get increase and it reduces post-operative pain scores and the anxiety <clears throat> if patient cannot do physical exercises at least ask them to do spirometry and um, respiratory exercises that will help to uh, earlier recovery after the surgery and uh, uh, it will increase his PO2 also so patient will have has uh, will have a smoother extubation and uh, reduced chances of ICU admission and ventilation in the post operative period medical optimization of various conditions like hypertension IRT metabolic syndrome and glycemic control is very important to reduce the uh, perioperative complications uh, and glycemic control is very important to reduce the chances of infection and redo surgery preoperative preparation fasting and carbohydrate drink in preoperative preparation you will get fasting and carbohydrate drink we will see in the next slides bowel preparation infection prophylaxis thromboembolic prophylaxis and prevention of nausea and vomiting so fasting and carbo why it is required previously we were thinking that uh, we should give the patient nbm for eight hour but fasting increases the metabolic stress it leads to hyperglycemia and insulin resistance all this happens because of prolonged fasting because it gives stress it will lead to hypoglycemia and it will lead to catabolic process and all it will lead to all this like hyperglycemia and insulin resistance so it is recommended to give 800 ml at bedtime and 400 ml two hours before surgery carbohydrate thing so you can dissolve glucose powder in the 100 gram glucose powder in, in the 200 ml of milk uh, 200 ml of uh, water and you can give it or else you can give other clear uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, drinks like uh, black coffee or uh, lime juice or, but it should be clear no milk it can be used in non insulin dependent uh, diabetes mellitus uh, without any problem it can be used cautiously in insulin dependent diabetes mellitus looking at the blood sugars evidence of mechanical bowel preparation this is for surgeons but it is important for us also it is troublesome time consuming and could be expensive because sometimes it, it requires preoperative hospital admission it can result into abdominal pain bloating and putting fatigue preoperatively it can cause fluid and electrolyte imbalance and if patient is old age and if you give bowel preparation there are all chances of electrolyte imbalances and dehydration when you induce the patient there will be hypotension uh, because of patient is uh, dehydrated and uh, it will create problems poor preparation may result in liquid stools which increases the intraoperative chance of spillage and infection and leaks it causes histological changes in colorectal mucosa potential bacterial translocation and anastomosis uh, disruption uh, is uh, chances of there because of this uh, color changes in colorectal mucosa in uh, certain bowel preparation it may produce explosive gases and an increase the incidence of wind, wound infection due to overgrowth of e coli uh, only few surgeries like uh, low anterior resections uh, 
uh, where they had worked at uh, uh, mechanical bowel preparation otherwise uh, they say that it is not required dvt profile access again this is very important chances of dvt in prolonged surgery is very high it is beyond our imagination uh, and if it at, at if it at all occurs then it can be uh, uh, it can cause mortality also all patient for elective surgery should be started on own only daily low molecular weight with heparin it can be given before uh, night before surgery and it should be continued uh, throughout the hospital stay um, TD stockings should be used it should be started preoperatively uh, in the recovery area and it should be continued intraoperatively as well as postoperatively till patient get mobilized antibiotic profile axis this is very important first dose of antibiotic should cover both aerobic and anaerobic organization and it should be uh, administered uh, half an hour before the skin incision uh, second dose should be repeated if procedure lasts more than 4 hours and if there is a major blood loss more than 1500 ml. Pre-medication, this is important for us. It is not mandatory to give any type of pre-medication in, uh, in normal patient. Ideal agent sh should be to reduce the surgical stress response without sedation if at all required. Beta blocker and alpha 2 agonist clonidine or dexmedetomid they are advised they reduce the heart rate they reduce the catecholamine release and they reduce the surgical stress to the patient without causing postoperative respiratory depression or increase the uh, without increasing the chances of postoperative nausea and vomiting and sedation and chances of aspiration and said pcm and dexamethasone you can give dexamethasone works in two ways it prevents nausea and nausea in the post-operative period and it reduces the inflammatory response to the surgery so there will be less pain also and it increases the duration of block also for so so for pre-medication routine use of anticholinergic as a pre-medication is not recommended either for GA or spinal anesthesia whatever type of anesthesia you are giving atropine or glycopyrrolate is not recommended nowadays Benzodiazepines are associated with prolonged extubation time and it may increase risk of pulmonary aspiration because patient may remain sedated postoperatively and it will increase the chance of aspiration. Routine preoperative use of a 2 to antagonist in patient who have to no apparent risk risk of pulmonary aspiration is not recommended. So even pentocid or Rentec is not recommended if it is not indicated. Intraoperative components surgical factors laparoscopic surgery are always always recommended when it is eras protocol because it will uh, in, uh, uh, the, it will reduce the incision size it will make the recovery faster uh, with laparoscopy you can mobilize the patient faster and you can discharge the patient faster if open surgery is there small transverse or oblique incisions are recommended no rise tube, no drains and no catheter whenever possible. Anesthetic factors, we have to take care of POV profile axis, no opioids or less opioid, blocks and epidural, short acting drugs and inhalation agents and avoid hypothermia. Short duration of epidural analgesia and local blocks. Epidural anesthetic are common used for colorectal surgery. The aim is to reduce the dose of general anesthetic needed and the stress response. How it helps? If you give epidural, it will reduce the stress response and it will reduce the requirement of GA as well as of opioid. So it, it helps in opioid sparing anesthesia also. It initiates at the beginning of the procedure. Start it before the incision. Don't wait for incision. So if you give, provide pro preemptive analgesia, that one, uh, uh, if you don't provide preemptive analysis, yeah, patient will have uh, have sensitization of pain receptor, and in postoperative period, requirement of analgesia will go higher if you haven't give preemptive analysis. Yeah. It should be continued maximum up to 48 hours. Winning starts from 12 hours postoperatively because our goal is to mobilize the patient as early as possible. 
so epidural anesthesia you can use step blocks you can use regular anesthesia alone if surgery is uh, limb surgery or surgery like hernia surgery it directly attenuates the post operative stress response it promotes the rectum or gut function um, uh, it reduces the post operative opioid requirement it provide post operative analgesia also and it reduce the post operative ileus by blockage of the sympathetic nervous system so in this patient uh, ileus will be less early bowel movement patient will start uh, oral early and patient will discharge early opioids are with some adverse effect they cause drowsiness dizziness dysphoria post operative nausea vomiting urinary retention constipation respiratory depression delayed discharge delay return of daily living second most common cause of readmission and it causes hyperalgesia algesia also and it can cause acute tolerance so opioids are with many adverse effect uh, and they are against the protocols of eras so uh, we should go for opioid sparing analgesia or uh, we should minimize the use of opioids uh, to for early recovery opioid of course opioid reduce propofol dose or um, um, make up the inhalation agent uh, front leading of the opioid lead to poor outcome it is uh, seen in the various studies and tight control it helps in tight control of hemodynamic but it is not required in many of the surgeries multimodal analgesia scores over using opioids so you can combine various techniques like you can use either epidurals or blocks or local infiltration along with various drugs like maxalf ketamine um, or uh, paracetamol and said so these drugs are the works at different level of pain pathway and if you combine all this drug requirement of opioid will come down we can use dexmedetomidinin or clonidine which will again reduce the requirement of uh, Um, opioids with very good hemodynamics intraoperatively which will reduce the blood loss also because you can provide hypotensive anesthesia and reduce the blood loss that again enhance the recovery so opioid sparing anesthesia minimal post operative hang- hangover and effect on gi motility it helps in the short acting anesthetic agent and analgesic uh tiva or short acting volatile anesthetic agent should be used and you can use alpha to blocker as i said post operative nausea and vomiting avoidance of post operative nausea is also very important this is one of the side effect of surgery most feared by the patient and can be severely incapacitating so we have to take care of pnv interruption of oral analgesia caused by pnv can cause real problem with analgesia so uh, sometimes p- because of pn post operative nausea vomiting you have to interrupt the oral analgesia and it can cause a real big problem so iras recommendation of risk ratification of the patient during surgery for pnv using the fl uh, criteria so uh, what is the uh, fl criteria there are four components of uh, fl criteria like female gender uh, past history of the nausea and vomiting and some uh, um, two other components also so if score is higher than you have to uh, if patient is high risk then you have to go for dexamethasone fight three receptor antagonists dropater uh, metoclopramide and uh, uh, at the end of the surgery but if it is moderate risk then go for dexamethasone and only for the ondansetron at the end of the surgery so it depends on the uh, type of the risk involved so, uh, muscle relaxant we are using in abdominal surgeries whenever possible we should avoid the muscle relaxant uh, because uh, neuromuscular blockers uh, blockers are associated with cumulative effect so if surgery is prolonged then there are chances of accumulation and delayed recovery the residual effect of uh, muscle relaxation is associated with adverse respiratory events like aspiration and admission in the icu for prolonged time and ventilation 
neurostigmine has a dose dependent increase in pulponary various there are various study if you in, uh, increase the dose of in neurostigmines to reverse the patient then again it can lead to respiratory depression and cause the complications uh, use the smallest possible dose of muscle relaxation and uh, if possible avoid it uh, neurostigmine dose need to be titrated how uh, it is according to the top count if top count is 4 with no fat administer minimal dose like 20 microgram per kg ideal body weight uh, if top count is 1 administer neostimin 60 microgram per kg of ideal body weight and if there is no top response then delay the reversal till you get some response on of the top for inhalation agent some key points Desfluran at 0.1 mg had no effect on peripheral or central CO2 sensitivity. Other anesthetic agent like isofluran or sevofluran at 0.1 mg also it will reduce the peripheral sense CO2 sensitivity to uh, so there will be um, uh, no respiratory center stimulation in response to CO2 but desfluran doesn't cause is it solubility of anesthetic agent impact the pharyngeal reflexes uh, desfluorant has minimal solubility so i believe desfluorant is the best agent uh, but you can use sevofluran and isofluran uh, as well upper airway morbidity with lma is similar with desfluoran and sevofluran and airway reflex recovery with desfluoran is in, uh, independent of duration of anesthesia this is very important whatever the duration of anesthesia airway reflex recovery will be same with this program so patient will have reduced chance of aspiration and respiratory complication with this program nitrous oxide again it is a controversial agent uh, it causes increase in nausea and vomiting so it is against iras but um, it provide excellent amnesia and analgesia and it reduce the anesthetic and opioid requirement so if you induce the patient with propofol and if you give prophylactic antiemetic therapy it negate effect of the nitrous oxide on post operative nausea and vomiting so depends on the surgery you can either use it or not use it uh, like nitrous oxide but uh, tv is the best for the iras um, protocol ventilation is also important to reduce the chances of uh, lung injury in the post operative period we have to go for uh, uh, low tidal volume and high respiratory rate like 6 to 8 ml per kg high tidal volume can lead to um, uh, lung damage like uh, uh, barotrauma and volutrauma it is co2 you should maintain around 40 mm hg some of the studies say that mild hypercapnia is also good it causes vasodilatation and it improves the uh, tissue perfusion and that is how it uh, helps in the wound healing also mild hypercapnia uh, produces respiratory uh, improves the respiratory drive also fluid management again this is very important if you patient keep the patient hypovolemic Uh, it will lead to hyperperfusion of the organs but if uh, patient have, have hypervolemia it will lead to tissue edema and delayed healing of the wound so you have to keep the u volemia not higher not lower you can use various um, uh, um, volume status me- measurement technique like vital sli- signs like blood pressure heart rate physical examination like capillary refill temperature skin temperature lab test like uh, sodium urea uh, blood lactate level um, you can measure cvp uh, uh, um, pulmonary arterial weight pressure or cardiac various technique to measure the cardiac output so um, goal directed therapy is recommended in iras but uh, not always possible in our setups Uh, we can look at uh, cardiac urine output also to uh, and if it is less uh, then we can uh, increase the uh, fluid but urine output is also not always reliable method so we have we have to combine various parameters to give the fluid liberal fluid will lead to higher chances of complication that's why they advise to restrictive fluid management fluid restriction group had significant lesser complications like anatomy uh, anastomotic leakage wound infection cvs and pulmonary complication and uh, post operative hypoxemia so restrictive fluid uh, 
therapy is recommended in iras protocol post operative component like early fitting early mobilization multimodal analgesia maintenance of hydration uh, early removal of urinary catheter and using chewing gums to establish uh, peristalsis is recommended early post operative diets is recommended patient should be allowed oral fluid on the day of surgery and uh, for uh, limb surgeries as early as possible you can allow the fluid oral diet over next 24 hours in colorectal surgery patient not meeting their nutritional requirements uh, then you should consult the dietitian early feeding may be beneficial in reducing the risk of anastomical disease infection and reducing the duration of hospital stay early post operative mobilization is also very very important it may uh, if you made uh, we should make the patient to sit on the chair on evening of the surgery we can um, without uh, ask him to do it without any help on day 1 assisted mobilization is recommended on day 1 or 2 and physiotherapy should be explained preoperatively and physiotherapist has uh, to enforce mobilization plan throughout the post operative period immobilization even shorter duration can lead to some deleterious complications like thromboembolism loss of muscle strength pulmonary atelectasis and worsening of the pulmonary function and everything all these things will lead to a delayed recovery and prolonged stay in the hospital a restricted amount of fluid should be continued in the post operative period as well duration of post operative period patient should be prescribed analgesic like paracetamol and nsaid once you stop the epidural you should uh, shift to nsaid and paracetamol or diclofenac opioids uh, and trem- tramadol should be reserved for the for the back to pain if patient has back to pain then only you should go for opioids and tramadol attention should be paid whenever opioids are administered to prevent nausea and vomiting and regular antiemetic should be prescribed especially when patient is either on tramadol or opioids last but not least od is is important audit meeting should be regularly organized and should be attended by medical nursing and other ancillary staff iras protocol is all about they they, they give four workshop like initial introduction then how, how to um, uh, implement in the hospital and uh, for, at last uh, they audit with uh, what need, uh, what need to be changed so audit meeting should be done at the hospital level regularly to implement it in a better way clinical outcome including readmission rates and compliance to the various iras strategies should be regularly audited readmission rates after iras implementation should not exceed more than 10% results should also be uh, disseminated using the local it system such as the internet and email so this is how you can do audit post discharge you have to ensure 30 day follow up including phone call at 48 hours 7 day clinical visit and any emergency visit if required so 30 day follow up is also advised so this is all about iras and this is the way to become a anesthetist to the perioperative physician so take a part in the um, iras protocol in your hospitals and be a perioperative physician uh, my best wishes are with you thank you thank you very much